What if I told you that one of the greatest revenge stories in motorsport history wasn't about two men or even two companies, but about a single engine? An engine born not in the elegance of Italian workshops, but in the brutal, grease-covered battlefields of American stock car racing. An engine that would travel across the Atlantic, enter the most grueling endurance race on Earth, and silence one of the most legendary names in racing forever. This is the untold saga of the Ford 427 side oiler. The beating heart of the GT40 that shattered Ferrari's dynasty at Le Mans 1966. A story of betrayal, obsession, and the raw force of American engineering muscle. In 1963, Henry Ford II had a problem. His company was huge, dominating American streets with cars like the Thunderbird and Galaxy. But in racing, Ford was invisible. Across the ocean, a man named Enzo Ferrari ruled motorsport. His scarlet cars had conquered Le Mans six years in a row. In the world of speed, Ferrari wasn't just a brand. He was royalty. Ford wanted that crown. And rather than build a new racing empire from scratch, he decided to buy one. The plan was bold. Ford would purchase Ferrari outright, giving the American giant instant racing credibility. Ford sent his best negotiators, led by Lee Iacocca, to Maranello. For weeks, they worked out every detail, money, production, future racing plans. By May 1963, the deal was almost done. Henry Ford II could already taste victory, but then it happened. Enzo Ferrari looked at the contract one last time. Buried deep inside, a clause stated that Ford would control Ferrari's racing budget and could decide which races the team would enter. For Enzo, racing wasn't a department of his company. It was his soul. And no one, not even the mighty Ford Motor Company, was going to control it. He pushed the papers away and stood up. According to witnesses, Ferrari looked Ford's men in the eyes and said something that would ignite a war. I will not sell my soul to people who make ugly cars for ugly people. Back in Detroit, the message hit like a slap to the face. To Henry Ford II, this wasn't just a failed business deal. It was personal. He was the grandson of the man who had revolutionized the automobile. And now a European upstart had insulted his family name. Ford called his executives into a meeting and issued a command that would change motorsport forever. We're going to Le Mans and we're going to beat Ferrari. Ford's engineers went to work immediately. They partnered with British racing outfit Lola, using their chassis as a foundation for the GT40. The car was fast, blisteringly fast in testing, but speed wasn't enough. At Le Mans 1964, Ford entered three GT40s. By hour 10, all of them were out. Blown head gaskets, shattered transmissions, overheated engines. Ferrari took yet another victory. In 1965, Ford returned, this time with a bigger weapon, a massive 427 cubic inch V8. But even this wasn't enough. Every single Ford failed before the finish. Enzo Ferrari, watching from the pits, must have been smiling. The European press laughed. Ford had money, yes, but in their eyes, Detroit didn't understand endurance racing. They called it a battle the Americans could never win. This is when Ford made a critical decision. They handed the program to Carroll Shelby, a man who had already beaten Ferrari with his Cobra at shorter races and who understood what it took to survive endurance events. Shelby knew the GT40 had potential, but its heart, the engine, needed to be indestructible. Ferrari's V12s were fast and elegant, but they couldn't match the raw torque of an American V8. Still, Ford's own big blocks were fragile at Le Mans speeds. The answer 
came from a place no one expected, NASCAR. In America's stock car arenas, engines weren't designed for 24 hours, but for brutal sprints at constant high RPM. Ford's 427 cubic inch FE Series V8 had dominated NASCAR, and engineers believed with the right modifications, it could be made to last at Le Mans. The breakthrough was an innovation called the side oiler system. In a normal engine, oil travels to the top first, then down to the crankshaft. At 7,000 RPM for hours on end, that delay could destroy an engine. The side oiler rerouted the flow, sending pressurized oil directly to the crankshaft first, the most critical point. It was mechanical insurance against catastrophic failure. Ford reinforced everything. Cross-bolted mains, forged steel crank, high-strength pistons, solid lifters. The result was a 485 horsepower monster that could take punishment lap after lap without a hint of weakness. By 1966, the stage was set for one of the most intense battles in motorsport history, Le Mans. 24 hours of pure endurance, speed, and willpower. Ford's secret weapon? The 427 side oiler. Now fine-tuned, tested, and ready to tear the asphalt apart. Unlike Ferrari's high-revving V12s, this beast didn't just sing. It roared with raw, brutal torque. It was the muscle car heart in a race car body. A combination Europe wasn't ready for. The name Side Oiler came from its unique oiling system, pumping vital lubrication to the crankshaft first, ensuring the engine could take punishing stress lap after lap. While Ferrari's engines danced on the edge of precision, Ford's was a hammer, relentless, unbreakable. June 18, 1966, as the green flag dropped, the thunder of the 427 echoed through the French countryside. Ferrari's team, confident in their legacy, suddenly found themselves struggling to keep pace. Hour after hour, the American V8 kept pounding away, shrugging off the strain while Ferrari's machines began to falter. And then the unthinkable happened. By the final lap, Ford wasn't just winning, they were dominating. The GT40s, powered by the side oiler, crossed the finish line one, two, three, a clean sweep that sent shockwaves through Italy and left Enzo Ferrari in stunned silence. As the sun rose over Le Mans on June 19, 1966, the outcome was no longer in question. Ferrari, the reigning champion, had been defeated. Their cars, once the symbol of endurance and precision, sat broken in the garages. On the track, it was all Ford. Eight GT40s had entered. Three remained, and they weren't just surviving. They were in absolute command, but victory carried a twist. In the final hours, Ken Miles, the brilliant British driver who had fought through every test, every failure, every heartbreak, was leading. He was about to win Le Mans after already conquering Daytona and Sebring earlier that year. It would have been an unprecedented triple crown. Yet Ford management wanted more than a win. They wanted a picture, a dramatic staged finish with three GT40s crossing the line together, a symbol of total dominance captured forever in newspapers and magazines. Miles was told to slow down. Obedient to the team, he did. The cars bunched together, engines rumbling side by side. But the rules of Le Mans were cruel. In the event of a tie, the car that started further back on the grid would be declared the winner. And so, Bruce McLaren and Chris Amon, starting behind Miles, were awarded first place. Ken Miles, the man most responsible for Ford's triumph, was denied his greatest victory 
in the final seconds. It was a heartbreaking end to a legendary drive. Just months later, Miles would tragically lose his life testing another Ford prototype. For many, the bittersweet photo finish of 1966 became both his crowning achievement and his greatest loss. For Henry Ford II, revenge was complete. The insult from Marinello had been answered in the loudest possible way. Not only had Ford beaten Ferrari, they had humiliated them with a clean sweep. It was the industrial might of Detroit crushing the elegance of Italy. Enzo Ferrari never returned to Le Mans with a factory prototype. The dynasty was broken. For the next four years, Ford's GT40, powered by the mighty 427 side oiler, would continue to dominate the race, cementing its place as one of the greatest endurance machines ever built. The Ford 427 side oiler wasn't just an engine, it was a statement. It proved that American engineering, often dismissed as crude and heavy-handed, could not only compete with Europe's best, but utterly destroy it on the biggest stage in motorsport. Its secret was not elegance, but brute force reliability. Cross-bolted main caps, forged steel crankshaft, solid lifters, and that revolutionary side-mounted oil gallery that kept the heart of the engine alive, hour after hour, at the red line. At Daytona, at Sebring, and most famously at Le Mans, the 427 side oiler showed the world that durability was just as important as speed. Today, the side oiler is remembered not just as a race engine, but as a symbol of a golden era, a time when corporations spent millions, not for marketing, but for pride. A time when engineers had free reign to push limits, and when drivers risked their lives chasing immortality. And for American fans, it remains a story of sweet revenge. When Detroit took on Marinello, and the hammer of the 427 side oiler silenced the prancing horse. The Ford vs. Ferrari war gave us one of the greatest motorsport legends of all time. But at its core, it was never just about cars, or drivers, or even companies. It was about an engine. An American V8, born from NASCAR brutality, perfected for endurance, and unleashed on the world stage. The engine of vengeance. The 427 side oiler. If you enjoyed this deep dive into automotive history, make sure to subscribe for more stories of speed, engineering, and the rivalries that shaped motorsport. Because sometimes, the machines tell the greatest stories of all.